The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said, and to them he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. On receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only for one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What is grace? What does it mean to say that we are saved by grace? To say that we are saved by grace means that we did nothing to earn it. Grace is unmerited favor. It is favor that is unearned <laughs> and undeserved. And this is the difference between grace and justice. What we receive by justice, we deserve. But what we receive by grace is unearned and undeserved. We receive it purely by the goodness and the mercy of the giver. Our gospel lesson highlights this difference it tells us that God's salvation is something that we receive by grace. It is unearned and undeserved. It is not something that we can demand on the basis of justice. We receive salvation on the basis of God's goodness and mercy. And this means that it comes to us through God's grace. The unearned and undeserved favor of God. To make this point, our parable uses an economic example. In the parable, laborers agree to work in the fields, and each agrees to work for the daily wage of a single denarius. But the workers are hired at different hours of the day, and so some work the entire day for a single denarius, but others get the same wage even though they work for only one hour. At the end of the day, all of the workers receive the same wage. And those who worked all day long are mad 
because they received no more than those who worked for just one hour. They think that they, should de they deserve more as a matter of justice, but this is exactly the point in dispute. The workers argue in terms of justice, but the boss operates on the basis of grace. It is by grace that all get the same wage, not by justice. And the point of the parable is to teach us that we receive salvation by God's grace alone. It is not something that we can demand by justice. Our parable uses economics to make a point about salvation. And so if we get the economics wrong, we will miss its point about salvation. For instance, many liberals think that this parable teaches socialist economics. And for that reason, they also believe that it teaches a social gospel. I'm not kidding. I once heard a Methodist minister use this parable to argue for income equality and marriage equality. Such liberalism destroys the message of salvation by grace alone. And so before considering the positive message of our parable, I want to spend a few minutes to drive a stake through the heart of the liberal interpretation. First, it's just plain false that this parable teaches socialism. Some think it teaches socialism because all the workers get the same wage. But please note, the boss was not forced by law to pay this wage. He pays it voluntarily. And the workers voluntarily contract with the boss for this wage. And this means that the economic exchange between the boss and the workers is voluntary and free. This is not socialism. It's free market economics. Let's go a bit deeper. The liberal view is not just wrong in fact. It's wrong in principle. As a matter of fact, our parable does not teach socialism. But as a matter of principle, it cannot teach socialism. And in fact, no passage of scripture can. Why? Because socialism violates God's law and undermines the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the liberal interpretation is not just wrong, it's heretical. Socialism violates God's law because it is based on taking money from some and giving it to others. Now it's one thing to pay taxes for government services that benefit us directly. It is absolutely right that we should pay for police and fire protection and national defense and a criminal justice system because these services benefit us directly. But when the government takes money from person A for the sole purpose of giving it to person B, this is theft, using the government as a middle person. And so our parable can't teach socialism because this would violate God's law against stealing. But the liberal interpretation also undermines the gospel. And this brings us to the central point of our parable. Socialism assumes that people have a right to things simply because they need them. And so if someone needs money or food or medical care, they have a right to it. They can demand it by justice simply because they need it. This is what liberals call social justice. But is this true? Do we have a right to things simply because we need them? When someone is down and out, does this give her a right to the money in our wallet? When a homeless man approaches us on the street, does he have a claim to our money simply because he is homeless? Can people claim your money as a matter of justice simply because they need it? Or must they receive it through your grace and mercy? Socialism undermines the gospel 
by confusing justice and mercy. It holds that having a need for something gives us a right to it as a matter of justice. But what about God's salvation? Don't we need it too? Can we say that we have a right to salvation simply because we need it? Can we claim God's salvation as a matter of justice? If having a need for something gives us a right to it, salvation becomes a matter of justice rather than a matter of grace. And so we see that the liberal interpretation is a wrong again because socialist logic undermines the gospel of grace. Our parable does not teach socialism or a social gospel. It says that salvation is by God's grace. By grace, the boss paid the same wage to all. He was not forced to do so as a matter of justice. The workers received the same wage due to the unearned and undeserved favor of the boss. This was a matter of grace and mercy. It was not something that they could demand by justice. In the same way, we are beggars before God. We need his salvation desperately, but we have no just claim upon it. We have no claim upon God's goodness because we have sinned against him in thought, word, and deed. We deserve his punishment. We deserve to be alienated from him, but we do not deserve his salvation. We receive it solely by the grace and mercy of God. And this is the hardest thing for us to get our heads around because the world is constantly telling us that there is no such thing as a free lunch. Despite our sin, God reaches out to us. This is not something that we can demand. We are saved by grace through faith in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We can't demand it by justice. We receive it through the unearned and undeserved favor of God. In God's kingdom, we all get a good wage, even though we don't deserve it. And this is what it means to be saved by grace. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise for the hymn of the day.